At the heart of the project is a simple creative experiment in which the musicians, instead of creating a piece of music and the robot responding to the music, they come to the studio and have to respond to a pre-existing uh, movement and piece of choreography that the, was created for the robot. And so in this way, the music is subservient to the machine rather than the machine being subservient to the music. Each, each piece of choreography has been, has been created using a particular type of constraint, which I've created for myself. And I've used um, particular ratios extracted from the Babbage drawings that he created over 150 years ago. Um, for example, with um, Holly Herndon, we've used a 36 to 5 ratio. With Tamara's, we've used uh, a um, 5 to 4. And with uh, Beatrice's, there's a 9 to 8. And these are particular ratios, particular cogs, that are key intrinsic cogs inside this incredibly elaborate machine. Um, and then they, in turn, have responded and used those, those, um, those pieces of uh, those particular ratios and used them in their music. So the, when, when the musician arrives in the studio, they're confronted by this very, um, this very kind of striking physical robot that's full of all this anthropomorphic potential. And one of the key interests for me is for them to sort of create meaning out of this movement. So they are confronted by this thing called a spline, which is essentially the pathway of the light bulb. So if you take a photograph of that movement, you get the pathway, which is present on the four buttons or on the sleeves of the records. But essentially, there's just this point in space. But as it rises, falls, moves, and sweeps, the musician has to interpret that as movement and, and, and meaning and create, and create meaning from this particular movement or this choreography. So it's, it's really sort of trying to sort of tap into that, that ambiguity or that sort of interesting vein of what movement means. The pathway of the light bulb, which is essentially the thing that we are um, choreographing, is called a spline. And it's not just a pathway, it's not just a piece of spaghetti in space, but it, because it also contains the speed profile of the spline. And one of the, the hardest challenges of, of the project, technically for me, has been able to control the speed profile, not just the path. And so there are these sinusoidal movements, this very slow, inefficient movements, where instead of the robot moving very efficiently between A and B, it's backing, backing on itself and it's tucking in and moving through itself and we're creating almost problems for the robot rather than kind of efficient movements of it moving very quickly. We're trying to create a, a sort of hum, a humanistic movement for the machine, create, maximize its anthropomorphic potential and its psychological potential. This is the, uh, the fourth location that the Ada Project has been shown in and in a way, even though it's one of the most conservative and most sort of uh, classical, it's probably one of the most controversial and the most um, kind of uh, exciting because we're sort of catching people unawares. It's not a gallery space. People come here for the famous uh, tea and uh, Earl Grey and cake, cakes, but they're sort of greeted instead of by, by a jazz band by this incredible sort of, uh, this sort of very industrial sort of uh, quite, so it feels quite guerrilla in a way. This thing is catching people unawares and it's catching people off guard.